يحيى خذ الكتاب بقوة وآتيناه الحكم صبيا إذ قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفيك ورافعك إلي محمد رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى is the most wise the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that every single soul and every creation of Allah is under the power of Allah. He has the sovereignty. He is the king of all kings. He is the one that is in charge of this life. And the human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. And that means by default, they are in need of Allah. They are in need to even take a breath. They are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And they created, he created them, and they were in state of submission. And they continue to be in state of submission. And they depart from this life in state of submission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers and revealed books for people to willingly submit themselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth. If you think for a second as your fitrah, your pure nature, when you think about it, is there anything more beautiful than to worship and to be obedient and to submit yourself willingly to the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one that is no nothing is the like of him whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the all-seer, the all-hearer subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most forbearing, the one that has the beautiful names and attributes. Nothing is more beautiful in this life than to make remembrance of him, than to make dhikr of him, than to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And to make these hearts that Allah created to be only for the sake of Allah. These hearts should not be contaminated whatsoever with anything but the creator of the heavens and the earth. No attachment to this heart whatsoever except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Physically, people can do things, yes. But where is the heart? They believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. He is the only one that we seek rewards from. He's the only one that we uh, worship and he's the only one that we fear and he's the only one that we seek rewards from and so on. That's why the, the verses in the Quran to establish these meanings in the heart, to establish the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah, to uh, save the believers and to warn the disbelievers and to be obedient to Allah. We are in Surah Al-Hijr and we heard uh, the stories mentioned in the Surah and more of these stories mentioned very briefly and if it's mentioned brief, in a brief way, we should also explain it in a brief way because it's meant to be this way. In other parts of the Quran, it's mentioned in details and it's meant to be there, you know, for the context that it serves. So in Surah Al-Hijr, continuing of some of the stories that are mentioned in the Surah to show us the way of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, to give comfort to the Prophet ﷺ in his mission, calling people to the Creator of the heavens and the earth, to worship Him alone. So mentioning the nations before and then afterwards, the verses will give us the, the lessons to be learned and how to fulfill the objective of our, of our life and so on. We stopped at verse number uh, 78 from Surah Al-Hijr. So we'll go through inshallah ta'ala verses uh, 78 all the way to uh, verse number 85. From 78 to 85 that would give us some of the understanding of the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth that would by necessity then give us the benefit of how to live our life and how to humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in means and guidance that people would not be able to know unless they would refer to the Quran. That's why the Quran guides us to the perfect way. Without the Quran, we are lost. Humanity are in loss unless they seek guidance from the book of Allah, the Quran, and the way of the Prophet So after mentioning the story of Lut before that Ibrahim and so on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then afterwards 
talking about other nations uh, in brief verse number 78 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِن كَانَ أَصْحَابُ الْأَيْكَةِ لَظَالِمِينَ And the companions of the thicket were also wrongdoers. Who are these people? The companions of the thicket. These are the people of Prophet Shu'ib. The people of Madian that are mentioned previously in many verses in the Quran, in Surah Al-Araf and others, in Surah Hud. And, and here it's mentioned. But with regards to Ashabu Al-Ayka, Al-Ayka is when there are so much uh, trees that are thick, called thickets, that means trees that are thick and the leaves are so, you know, the strength of it is high and it's all, you know, very strong and so much of it. Uh, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described their environment. And as if, as the ulama, they say, it's a reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon them. They had trees and it was thick trees with all kinds of shade and, and food and provisions and running water and all kinds of things for them, for them to be grateful to Allah. So when the Messenger of Allah sent to them Shu'aib and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ability to speak and was very eloquent in his speech to convey the truth to them and to refute all kinds of doubts that they had when it comes to the proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he made the truth very clear to them calling them to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So when they disbelieved in him and they turned away from him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them wrongdoers and he punished them. But after a period of time, and as we mentioned before, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth, that the punishment does not come all of a sudden when people are not warned, for example, or when people are not uh, warned and warned and warned and people when they are stubbornly disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the warnings have been made clear and the truth has been made very clear to them, then the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. The nations before, whenever they would deny their messengers, the punishment would come afterwards and destroy them. But for this ummah of the Prophet والسلام, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the dua of the Prophet والسلام, and that's the blessings of the Prophet وسلم, to humanity, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we have not sent you except as a mercy to mankind. And part of that or the way that this is true is that this ummah of the Prophet والسلام, they are not going to be punished like the nations before in this life in the sense that they are all going to be destroyed. And when we say the ummah of the Prophet والسلام, it does not refer in this context to the believers. It refers to all humanity from the time of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, till the Day of Judgment. They are the Ummah of the Prophet The people now on the face of earth in the East and the West and the South and the North, they're all from the Ummah, from the people of the Prophet وسلم, meaning that they, this is their Prophet and he was sent to them and they're supposed to believe in him and to follow him, and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Like the people of Nuh, like the people of Hud, the people of Lut, and many of them were punished and the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. But for the last ummah, the last nation, the last prophet of Allah, the matter is different as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted that as it's mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, that they won't be all destroyed. They will be given time after time. And after all, the moment of death is a point of no return whatsoever. So for the disbelievers, as an individual moment for all of them, this is the moment of punishment, everlasting punishment. When it compared to the punishment in this world as it happened to the nations before, it's nothing. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, the, the, the punishment in hereafter is greater, is more disgraceful. The punishment in the hereafter is more disgraceful, is, more, is bigger, it's an everlasting one. So even if people do not get punished in this life, as a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that deals with the, with the ummah and the followers or the people of the Prophet والسلام, it doesn't mean that they will be saved from it in the hereafter. And it shows that the punishment in the hereafter is far worse because it's an everlasting one. So he, here the verses are talking about the nations before and uh, reminding us. So the people of Ashabu al the people of Shu'ib, وَإِن كَانَ أَصْحَابُ الْأَيْكَةِ لَظَالِمِينَ They are wrongdoers. Why they were wrongdoers, we already know from other parts of the Qur'an that they 
were disbelievers. They disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They associated partners with Allah and they would uh, you know, rob others on their routes and their traveling and so on as it's mentioned uh, about them. So what happened to them? The next verse, verse number 79, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَانْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَإِنَّهُمَا لَبِإِمَامِ مُبِينَ so we took retribution from them and indeed both are on a clear uh, highway or both cities. What does that mean? فَانْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ Which means we took retribution from them and they were punished as a, res as a result of being ظالمين because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. So that's why they are mentioned with their evil characteristics that as a result of that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came. So it's basically saying to each and every one of us and to the nations on the face of earth, don't be among the zalimin, don't, don't be among the wrongdoers. And the worst vulm and the worst injustice whatsoever is to associate partners with Allah, is to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you compare that to all kinds of wrongdoing and injustices on the face of earth, it does not compare it to. Because the, to associate partners with Allah is far worse than all of this. Because the purpose of our existence is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So فَانْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, took retribution against them. They were treated with the justice of Allah. And then it says وَإِنَّهُمَا in the dual tense. إِنَّهُمَا in the dual tense, not referring to the people of Shu'aib or the city of the people of Shu'aib. No, it refers to the two cities, the city of the people of Shu'aib, the city of Madian, and what's mentioned before that, which is the cities of Lut. So both cities, both places, they are labi imami mubin. They are in clear route. Al imam, you know, the word imam is the one that leads. So they are present. Their places are present, and the people saw that what happened to them, and people can take lesson from them, from what they see. And that's why the Prophet والسلام, as it's mentioned, uh, you know, in the next verses about the people of uh, Thamud and the people of Wadi al Hijr that it was present and the Prophet ﷺ passed by them and how they craved their houses and it's still present till today in the mountains. And the Prophet ﷺ commanded the believers, the companions, whenever they pass by this, if they have to, to cover their heads and to weep because this is a land where the wrath of Allah, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the curses of Allah will rain down upon them. So again here, فَانْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَإِنَّهُمَا لَبِإِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ as a sign from Allah, their remnants or the, the way of the life that they were, it was left for people to take lessons, not for people to look and to say, wow, such a beautiful thing and how they were strong they are. No, it's, it's about taking lessons for people to increase their iman, for people to humble themselves, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is something that is for real. As even when people see the what the, you know, the people of Fir'aun, they left behind. And temples and monuments and things like this. What does that remind the believers when they read the Quran and they see this? And when they see it and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the end they were punished and Fir'aun was drowned and so on. And it shows that even though they had so much power and so much well establishments on the face of earth, but where are they now? They were destroyed. And they are returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the present time from them, what they are facing now, as it's mentioned in the Quran about the people of Fir'aun, and now Now, since they passed away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best how long that is, till the day of judgment, the hellfire is being presented to them every morning and every evening. And in the day of judgment, admit the people of Fir'aun to the most intense of punishment. So this is how the believers, they take lessons from what they see with their own eyes of these cities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed, the people of Madian, the people of Lut. And that's basically what is saying to us in the Quran so that people will take lessons from it. That will be continued afterwards, but after the break, so stay with us inshallah. Muhammadur Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi musalli Nabina Muhammadin wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in We'll come back and with the verses from Surah Al-Hijr from uh, 87 
all the way to 85 and mentioning the people of Madian and referring back to the people of Lut and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, took retribution against them and there are two cities that people can see the outcome of the evil actions of these people for people to learn and to take the lessons as we heard from this. Continuing with more people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed as a result of their evil actions after the matter has been made clear to them. Verse number 80, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَذَّبَ أَصْحَابُ الْحِجْرِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Which means indeed, أَصْحَابُ الْحِجْرِ The people of Al-Hijr, they denied the Mursaleen. And certainly did the companions of Thamud deny the messengers. These are the people of Thamud, أَصْحَابُ الْحِجْر They're referring to their valley that they were living in. And how that, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, as is going to be mentioned after uh, the next verse, is that how they strong they were. The people of Thamud, they were very strong, physically. And when people are strong, when human beings are strong, physically strong, or they have so much wealth and so on, uh, they tend to be more ignorant and more arrogant, right? Unless they are, of course, believers and they humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And arrogance, by the way, is a sign of foolishness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the human beings the ability to think. They have intellect. So why would a human being be arrogant when they see how they were created and how their life will end? And they see that. You see that with your heart. You see that it's a reality. And you have to make decisions and to make assumptions and to make all kinds of things as a result of this reality. And how that human beings are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in need of, of every breath we take. When we are in need of provisions, we are in need of guidance. So how can a person be arrogant and turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So these people, referring to Ashab al-Hijr, which is the people of Thamud, why? Because of how powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them. They denied al-Mursaleen, the messengers, those who were sent to them, messengers from Allah. Allah sent them and people denied them. What an evil uh, thing that is. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ آيَاتِنَا فَكَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِضِينَ and we gave them our signs, but from them they were turning away. We gave them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the ayat, the signs. And the story of Prophet Salih with his people, the people of Tamud, of you know, and the Naqa and the Camel, and how this was a clear sign. They asked for it. They asked for a she camel and it came from the rock, from nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it from nothing. It was a clear sign for them. A miraculous thing to their Prophet Salih and they saw it with their own eyes. But then they were tested and tried not to uh, harm this camel whatsoever and to leave it to drink in its day and they have the next day for them. But they killed it, disobeyed the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, associated partners with Allah and arrogantly thinking or asking, arrogantly asking for the punishment of Allah. So the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came unto them. So, وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ آيَاتِنَا We gave them our ayat and our signs. This ayat, what is sufficient for people to believe. As the Prophet والسلام, he said in the authentic hadith, مَا مِن نَبِيٍ مِنَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ There is no prophet from among the prophets. إِلَّا وَأُوْتِيَ عَلَى مَا مِثْلِهِ آمَنَ الْبَشَرِ Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to this prophet, what according to what he gave him, people would believe. So every prophet was given what is sufficient for people to believe. And then he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that I was given wahi. What was given to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, since he's the final messenger of Allah, not just something, and he was given things that people saw with their own eyes. It wasn't just things that the people would see physically in his lifetime, even though there's some, many, many miracles that happened to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, but the main one is a living one, a living miracle to the Day of Judgment, which is wahi, the Quran. Why? And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, and that's why I would hope that I would be the most among the Prophets that has followers. And that's true. Why? Because the miracle is a continuous one. It's for every person he live, he witness this miracle which is the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to the Prophet. ﷺ. So going back to the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people of Thamud what is the purpose of the ayat? We gave them our ayat. That means this ayah or the sign from Allah, like the she camel, for example, for the people of Thamud, uh, the stick of Musa alayhi salam, the, 
uh, what Isa alayhi salam would do to his people giving life to the death by the permission of Allah and so on. These ayat were sufficient enough for the people to believe, to humble themselves, to uh, be obedient to Allah. But did it really give that effect to them? It was rather an establishment of the evidence against them so that when the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, they are treated with justice. There is no excuse whatsoever. The miracles had, you know, came in front of the eyes and they saw it very clearly, but they denied the truth. So who are to be blamed? It's themselves. And this is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ ayatina to remember this meaning. فَكَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِضِينَ They used to turn away from it. Instead of going forward and believing and humbling themselves with regards to these ayat, they turned away from it. And also reflecting upon the ayat, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came unto us, the book of Allah, the Qur'an. And the worst thing that a person can do is to turn away from it. But instead we should turn to it and reflect upon its meanings and seek guidance from what is being said in the Qur'an. And one of which is what we're hearing. The stories of the prophets before the nations before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still describing the affairs of the people of Thamud and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favors upon them. And they, in return, they were arrogant and they turned away from the truth. The next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 82, وَكَانُوا يَنْحِتُونَ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ بُيُوتًا آمِنِينَ And they used to carve from the mountains houses feeling secure. How amazing and strong they were. وَكَانُوا يَنْحِتُونَ They used to carve ينحتون from النحت is to carve something. مِنَ الْجِبَالِ From the mountains. You know how powerful they would, you know, power that they had that they would carve, you know, from the mountains their homes, their houses. And it's still present till today. Buyutan aminin, they were secure. So they would carve their houses in the mountains and they were secure. And security is one of the greatest favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bestow upon a nation. And when a nation is deprived from security, what happens? Nothing else would be of any enjoyment whatsoever. All the favors of Allah that people would not realize it because there's no security. If people are not secure when it comes to their own life and their wealth, they won't be able to enjoy anything on the face of earth. They would not even be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in a good way. Why? Because they're, they're afraid of their own life and necessities of this life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed His favor upon them. They, he gave them the physical strength that they would carve their homes in the mountains and they were aminin, they were secure, they were safe. So what ought to be then their reaction to this? They ought to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Especially that with all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent clear signs from Allah, like in the story of Salih as we heard. So what else is left? And they still disbelieved, which is a proof that humanity, they don't believe just by, the, by seeing miracles. It never happened. This is not the thing that would make them believe. It's sufficient for them to believe. But it, this is not the thing that makes them believe. If they do not believe when the truth is being presented to them, nothing else would work. Because it's arrogance that deprived them, not the fact that this is the truth. Or when the punishment comes, then they believe, which is too late. And that's why we have to be really aware of these meanings. Al-Haqq, or the truth, has so much power in it. And the Qur'an expresses this Haqq, this truth, very clearly. So when anyone reads the Qur'an with sincerity, with purity, and he sees the haqq and the haqq, the truth becomes very clear, if he rejects it or she rejects it, it's because of arrogance, because of stubbornness, because of the ways of the forefathers, whatever there is, and nothing else would change than the heart unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides the person. So this is what the affair of the people of Thamud. So as a result of their arrogance and continuing to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّيْحَةُ مُصْبِحِينَ Which means, but the shriek seized them at early morning. The same as what happened to the people of Lut in the early morning. الصَّيْحَة Which is again the same as mentioned about the people of Lut. The shriek, the very uh, high and, and high-pitched sound that ter- you know, made them torn apart, destroyed them. فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّيْحَةُ مُصْبِحِينَ in the story of Lut, it was said, Mushriqeen. Mushriqeen means 
when the sun uh, was risen and it also refers to the early morning here musbihin in the early morning when the morning came what happened when the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come did anything benefit them were there strength benefiting for them did they push away the punishment of Allah because they were strong they used to carve their homes in their mountains uh, did the security benefit them that they had nothing of that was benefiting for them and that's why the next verse says فَمَا أَغْنَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ That means, uh, so nothing availed them from what they used to earn. Nothing availed them. فَمَا أَغْنَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ What they used to earn. What did they earn? Al-Kasb is what a person earns, one's actions. They earned disbelief. They earned ignorance, disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what they earned. So did whatever they had availed them, benefited them of course not which means that a person needs to seek their salvation by being a believer by being obedient to Allah by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what happened if the people of Thamud they if they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, before the punishment came unto them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and that's what the message of the messengers to call the people to repent to Allah and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone so fama aghna anhum ma kanu yaksibun it's a lesson and that's how you see how the verses in the Qur'an is not just saying a story of the people of Thamud but it's giving us clear lessons. Nothing availed them, nothing benefit, benefited them because of what they've earned of evil. So the same principle apply in our life. Whatever we earn, meaning actions in this life, we earn it for ourselves. We earn بالله, the punishment if we continue to commit evil without repenting to Allah. We earn the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the believers by His bounty and His mercy. If people would be obedient to Allah and always repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, look at what we have in this life. Wealth, health, uh, whatever the things that people fight over and they become so angry if they're deprived from it and all of this. All of that would be of no benefit whatsoever except for the believers, those who use these things for the sake of Allah. They we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the way the Prophet والسلام, everything in their life will be blessed. Why? Because the purpose of their life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and they fulfill this by following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a beautiful uh, verse that end these uh, set of verses that talks about the stories of the Prophets of Allah and, and the nations, those who arrogantly turned away from the truth that to remind ourselves that all of what they did did not benefit them. All of the evil that they did and all of the wealth that they accumulated is of, of no benefit whatsoever. They didn't take it with them after they died. When the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came unto them, they were seized, they were punished, they were destroyed. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet والسلام, with regards to his people, the disbelievers, he said, وَمَا هِيَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ بِبَعِيدٍ That means the punishment of Allah is not far from the ظالمين of at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, at this time, at all times. The punishment of Allah is not something that is far to happen. It's very near. That's why the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, one of the most hadith that brings the fear of Allah and the hope for the rewards from Allah. Very simple words but very deep in meanings that should not escape the hearts of the believers. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, الْجَنَّةُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَىٰ أَحَدِكُمْ مِنْ شِرَاكِ نَعْلِ وَالنَّارُ مِثْلُ ذَلِكُ which means the Jannah, paradise, is nearer to one of you than his shoelace, than his shoes. And the how fire is the same way. How close the matter is. How close is Jannah that no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no hearts have imagined. And how close is the how fire? As close as our shoes and how it's attached to ourselves. The same thing, the Jannah and the how fire. How close it is, is, is basically what the moment of death is. What after that it's you know, the punishment or the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we read these stories and the lessons learned from it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these lessons within the verses of the Qur'an to show that we are in the same situation. The way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never changes. So people should not be heedless, should not fool themselves, and but rather should humble themselves and be obedient to Allah and to imitate the ways of the, the, the believers as it's mentioned in these verses. Continue inshallah ta'ala with one more verse to go in these set of verses and lessons to learn. 
after the bricks is stable dust inshallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah.